I mean, I think you can do it without anybody even noticing or caring at this point, so I don't think it's a big deal. Um, and like I said, this is a high magic setting, so uh, somebody flying up isn't all that strange. Um, so you do that. Uh, you're you're going north. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- that's also the direction Key's going. Do you want to go to the other way? You no, want to go- I, I want to go the opposite direction Key's going. The, okay, the you one wanna, where- you're going to go to the west then. Okay. Because the west is the way the Hawks is going, the way that you would also like to go. Um, all right. So you immediately take off. Uh, you follow the crew uh, to their mustering point where you can see them uh, setting the ships um getting them ready for sailing um you see this uh large warehouse with these big doors open up as several of these large battleships uh begin to start sailing out of the bay um you're much faster than that you're able to continue um he uh sees a very similar um uh sight from the shoulder of mayberry as uh he's this this grunt along the troops who is uh setting together a couple ships but their fleet is much smaller in comparison i say probably like four or five ships um begin to set sail as this large uh where kangaroo um hops aboard uh one of the ships um oh, I you guys we were joking it is a weird kangaroo all right it's i, I just i i did air quotes that's that's what we're calling it now right. um because we don't have any other name to call it uh meanwhile uh, the other three, you continue. You guys are heading to the crew, correct? We are officially splitting the party. Uh, so you guys are heading towards uh, the docks. Um, you make your way down there. It takes you uh, probably about 20 minutes. In the meantime, to lose, you're able to start flying over the bay. Um, you get, uh, I'd say, 1,000 feet up, uh, up into the air, probably 800 to 1,000 feet away from the city as you're flying over the bay. Um, you start to see the outline of the bay itself, like the way that the the, the land kind of surrounds this area. Um, and you can see this uh, funnel, uh, this uh, canyon that is carved out of these mountains that kind of build up on the sides. Uh, this The, the same ca- uh, canal that you guys kind of sailed into the island. Um, uh, these ships are heading towards that, um, and you're much faster than these ships through the air, and you're able to kind of... Uh, scout ahead. Do you want to pursue ahead further of the ships, or do you want to kind of stay behind the ships? I, I kind of want to stay behind the ships. Okay, so you kind of get up into the air, and then you kind of just rain back on your uh, shepherd's crew because you kind of wait um, for the ships to catch up. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Key is aboard uh, a ship of troops. Um, they all look very nervous uh, and flustered, and Key gets this overwhelming feeling of secondhand anxiety um, as she's in this very unsettling uh, circumstance. The guards asking each other, what is it? What are we facing? Who would uh, who would attack the, the gate? Who has the power to attack both gates at once? And all this chaos among the crew. Eventually, the other three, you guys are able to make it back down to the docks. Um, and when you do, this is what you find. Uh, eventually, you find um, several guards uh, ripped apart and shredded on the docks um these guardsmen look like the same town guard wearing the same silver um uh armor uh and you see a bloodied uh ronda and schroeder kind of some barrels and crates on the dock ronda strider what happened here they came it's terrible. They took Tolfin and Liz. Who? Who are they? Uh, they didn't tell us. A bunch of thugs, bandits. They're all dressed in purple. Must have been a gang or a pirate crew of sorts. Came out of nowhere. Demanded that we pay them the barrels, but we didn't have any com- any command to, to do so, so we fought them off. I sent out some others to find you guys, uh, Doros, uh, Arton, and Aiden. That they were, they wanted to find you guys. I guess they didn't. A bunch of the others are through the town. I don't think they know what happened yet. Gods. Um, I immediately want to take a look out into the bay and assess the security situation there. Does it look like there are other ships or any risk to uh, to our two ships? 
you can go ahead and, and move your token down to the dock and give me a perception check. Yeah, I go like run up to the whatever the thing. Um, okay. And uh, I'm probably not the best to do this. Crap. Uh, Eleven plus uh, perception. Uh, Thirteen. Uh, as you kind of look out into the area, what you can see is there are no ships approaching. Uh, you do see at the distance uh, these battleships of the city leaving, uh, all bearing the same uh, flag of the Federation. Um, these ships are all leaving, and uh, there doesn't appear to be any threat here. You do notice that the biggest threat you have at the moment is a lack of your crew. Most of them are not present. It appears that they are enjoying their shore leave, and they're not here. Um, uh, the three uh, guards that are strung out on the dock, uh, Rhonda um, explains that they were the ones that Hawks sent to help you guys, and they fought valiantly, but they were no match for these thugs. Um, okay. I think it should be obvious to state, like we were talking about it, that, you know, hey, after um, <clears throat> after uh, uh, Tulu and uh, Key, after Key, uh, you know, finished doing their reconnaissance they're gonna come here right uh so um uh i i say uh ronda uh, and uh floki muster the crew we have establish a defensive perimeter prepare the guns prepare the sails if we have to have to set sail we have to go and find our crew um at that moment you um, hear oops sorry go ahead i was just gonna say could i how wounded are Rhonda and schroeder looking you said they were bloodied but how wounded are they looking schroeder looks to be on his last limb uh Rhonda looks hurt but she's taking it like a champ uh could i uh cure wounds on schroeder yeah you can go ahead and move your token up there uh 20 yeah i yeah, should already be next to schroeder um, All right. So he would get 11 hit points back. And I'm going to lay on hands Rondo for 15. Or not 15, uh, for 5. Bad. Okay. All right. Uh, you do so immediately as you are casting these spells. And they, they kind of nod in gratitude. Uh, you hear the sound of shifting stones uh, grinding against others as rapidly... Um, from all around you, up and down the dock, you uh, begin to see this uh, mound of the stone, like the, the structure that holds up the dock itself, begins to warp and kind of bulge as if something's coming up from underneath it. Um, and exactly that happens as you see several of these uh, figures come up out of the the ground below you um their fists are like glowing bright red and almost white uh with heat as they use these mag magma gloves uh to kind of burrow their way through the dock and approach you all um one of them kind of comes up um to uh ronda and gets ready to strike them and says give us our loot you witch um at that point we're gonna go ahead and roll for initiative Woo! Ah. Hey. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tulu, go ahead and roll for initiative two. Oh, okay. I know you're not here, but it'll matter for other stuff. Well. Okay. Twelve. Uh, Floki. 22. Okay. Vagrant. 12. Okay. Blue Rookie. 18. Okay. He. Oh, that's right. She is a person who I didn't consider in this particular situation. Let's see here. Uh, 8. 8. Okay. Uh... Indeed. There we go. All right. So the first person to act is uh, Loki. 
Yeah, boy, is it. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yep, they are... Certainly... People, I, th I think I'm... I think I'm going to have to cast sleep. I think it's going to have to happen. All right. On on the top echelon, the northernmost four. All right, you'll have to pause for a moment. I am having really technical difficulties. I can't get this, my roll 20 to zoom out, and it's really... Uh, you're casting sleep. Go ahead and roll for hit points, though. Oh, right. I'm, I'm, it's gonna be theater of the mind for my position, so you're gonna have to bear with me because I can't. I roll twenty, literally won't. You might have to reload it. <clears throat> uh, that might. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's a good. Because, uh, because I was having issues with it earlier. Where I was trying to get my uh, uh, ruler to work, and it just like wasn't showing up my ruler, so I just had to reload it real quick. Mm. It looks uh, like they pushed some new UI stuff, so it might be a little, you know, there might be bugs to squish. Anyway, thirty-seven hit points. Of, uh, of sleeping damage. And, and where did you want to aim that? Uh, such that it includes the top, the northernmost four northernmost. All right, Which... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say that this one nearest Rhonda is the one targeted first, and he has ex just exactly enough uh, to go down and no more. Oh, dear. Uh, he is currently asleep. Uh, that is your turn. Next is Kliroki. Um, Could I attempt to basically... Actually, we're just... Uh, so is uh, Floki and this other guy currently sharing space right now? Oh, sorry. Uh, he should be right there. Alright. Uh, okay, I guess we'll... We'll whack at him first. Alright. Roll oh. the hit. That's my. That'd be. A 24 to hit. Uh, 24 hits. As he, like, lunges towards Floki, you strike him on the back. All right. Um, I need to find my dice. Here it is. For six damage on the first attack. Okay. Um, and then on the second one. That's a nat twenty. Uh, that hit. Lit. Yeah. For if it's if it's a nat twenty, it's two d four, or it's double, right? You can either double it or or roll once and double the total, whatever you. Want. Alright. Yeah. Or, or for 15 damage. 15, nice. Uh, you strike down at him. You clank off a bunch of this weird armor that he's wearing. Uh, one of his gloves appears to malfunction and steam kind of erupts from it. Um, that is your turn. It is Rhonda's turn. She's going to go ahead and make her two attacks at the guy in front of her. Uh, both of those are gonna miss, even with her incredible modifier, because she rolled like garbage. Uh, she just begins to like lash out at this guy with her rapier. Um, he just starts deflecting it. He was pretty prepared to fight her. Uh, that brings us to Stroider, who's also gonna lash out at that guy. Uh, he is gonna hit with that, do his little bit of damage. Uh, okay. Uh, that brings us to Vagrant. <clears throat> do I see any crew on the ship? Uh, you look around, no, no one appears to be on the ship. I yell out, uh, all of you that are under this, uh, this vessel, anyone in the belly of the Twilight's Revenge, take up your arms, and I run out, uh, run this far, and the first thing I do is fire at this guy. All right. Uh... You call out to them. Uh, you don't see them, but uh, uh, Paige and Susa begin to appear out of it. Uh, and which one did you hit? Sorry, y'all thinking again. Uh, I was shooting at this one, uh, but I got an 11. Uh, 11 will miss, All right. exactly. And then I use, let's see, I used, um, I 
use the rest of my movement to jump and then land and draw my blade and attack him with my rapier. Go for it. And uh, let's see, this is not even close to a rapier. <laughs> close enough. It's closer to what I have. I have this squid over here. That's about all I got. A squid? Yeah. My wife uh, did beat this squid or crocheted me this squid. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's <was> pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty epic. Yeah. Twenty-five to hit. That will hit. And do Ten damage. Nice. Uh, you uh, strike this guy from behind. He ah! shouts out in pain. Uh, we're cut over to Tulu. Uh, Tulu, uh, you have got to this point where the ships have begun to uh, come out in front of you, uh, and you continue down, uh, following them. Uh, they. It, you get to this point where you start uh, flying down uh, this canyon, uh, and you meet the this uh, big fortress where it is the main gate, and there's these two large watchtowers that kind of have these big ramparts on top that they're able to shoot down. You see them launching barrages of arrows um, from this. Once you, with your height advantage, you're able to look over, and you can see uh, at the attacking vessels. Um, there appears to be four attacking vessels which is no match for the fleet that are coming from the opposite side. Who sees this? Do I do. Okay. Uh, they just look like nor normal bandits, that, as far uh, as I can tell. Give me an insight check. 16 plus... 19. Uh, with a 19, uh, you're able to notice that uh, a few of these uh, flags that they're bearing um, look like um, dwarvish runes. Uh, you don't recognize the dwarvish runes. Can you read dwarvish? No. Okay. Uh, you notice to be dwarvish runes. You can't tell if they're organized or privateers or what they are, uh, but you do recognize their ships as dwarvish. And do I see a certain color being flown? Uh, it looks to be mostly bronzes, and like, a, like an off gold, like a bronze color. Okay, but... I see four. They got four ships. We got a lot on on the the city has a lot more than that. He has about eleven vessels heading this way. And how close are they to engaging each other? Uh, about twenty minutes because they have to like actually sail all the way down this canal and they have to go single file line. So before all the ships can be here, it'd be a while. I'm trying to think without meta game and what would Tulu do? Yeah, I mean, I, he was sent out just to scout and see yeah. what was going on. So I think... Um, now, is a werewolf... Am I, 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 did I go the direction that the, were, the werewolf guy went, the kangaroo guy? Yes. Um, is he on the lead ship for the uh, city he defense? Is. He is on the lead ship. Okay, but I think we'll, the city will overpower the, the attackers. So, all right, I've seen what I need to see. I'll start heading back. Okay, uh, you start heading back. Uh, that brings us to Key. Uh, Key is out, uh, going the opposite direction. Uh, and in this, uh, fleet of ships, um, they're continuing down across, um, the way. And then all of a sudden there's this massive loud smash, um, as, uh, all the guards turn and Key can watch as a ship is smashed by another ship that came out of the sky. Just it flat, destroying it from the mast down, um, these uh, uh, guards begin to panic as ships begin to, uh, evasive maneuvers to turn and approach this um, uh, this vessel. Um, he can go ahead and give me a perception check. All right. I would also like for Key to vacate the vessel she's on and basically get out of the explosion radius of anything that might explode. Okay. I'm not big on that. You want to just right. separate or just leave? Uh, separate, not not leave the the like area, but attempt to escape danger, and that's a seventeen perception. Uh, with a seventeen, uh, she's also able to recognize uh, dwarvish runes uh, on the ships. I'm piratey. Uh, Does that mean anything to me? Uh, you can go ahead and give me a history check. Love me some history. I did not probably succeed. That would be a five. Uh, with a five, you're uncertain. I, I think even, like, through the blurry vision of Key's eyes, it's 
Um, cause I imagine like it's, it's a bit disorienting to be at two places at once. Um, so as you're trying to focus, you, you don't quite recognize, uh, if they are organized or not. Um, you, you um, yeah, I'm sorry with five. I can't, I can't reveal any more on that. Uh, continuing, it is now their turn as, uh, these, uh, people and these large, they have these like, um, strange looking armor is how i can describe it it has these pipes that kind of come up and around their shoulders to attach to their gloves um creating these super hot magma gloves uh two of them are going to come up to vagrant oh got some weird world 20 stuff there we go uh two of them are going to approach vagrant two of them are going to come up to kloroki uh this one is asleep this one's going to come up to ronda uh this one's going to come up here this one's going to use all of its movement to come up to Schroeder. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, f four attacks into Ronda. Uh, only one of those hits because Ronda has good armor. I'm sorry, that was only th supposed to be three attacks. So I'm just gonna reroll those. Uh, one attack still hits Ronda. Uh, Ronda's gonna take some fire damage. Uh, thankfully though, with their heal from before, it's not terrible. Uh, and that is that. Uh, one attack and destroyed her. Uh, misses. Uh, two attacks into Kuroki. One of them crits, sadly. Uh, so that would be 66 into you. Oh. Uh, uh, that is uh, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 24. 24 fire damage. Ow. Uh, two of them are going to attack Fagrin. Uh, that is uh, 19 to hit and a 3 to hit. The 19 hits. Okay. Uh, 2 fire damage, or 2d6 fire damage. Uh, you take 7 fire damage. Um, and that is their turn. Uh, back to Floki. Alright. I definitely change what I want to do slightly. Yes, I would like to walk up to here and shove this fellow here. Okay, give me an opposed athletics check. Oh boy, I'm I'm uh, I'm athletic, but not inspired, unfortunately. Oh wow. I lied. That's a five. Uh, they barely beat you with a seven. Boo. They're able to just kind of brush off your shoulder. Uh, I'm going to say you, I'm going to give you uh, another action if you'd like to do something else. Except that, that just, just feels bad. If, if nothing can I happens. shove him again? All right, go for one more try. I really rolled a three, so okay. He, he has a 23. That feels like it changed very quickly. From a three uh, to a twenty-three. Yeah, three the first time around when I roll again and I rolled an eighteen. Yeah, twenty-three. All right. Well, it's mathematically possible. No, wait, it isn't. Yeah. All right. Be that way, user interface. Anyway, I rolled a five again. Okay. Uh, you shove into this guy again. Uh, these these kind of uh, stouter fellows are kind of able to uh, ward you off and hold their ground. Uh, bonus action. All right. Uh, bonus action is going to be a whole lot of nothing, I think. Okay. Um, but I would like to say, uh, Strider, get back to the ship. He nods agreeingly. Uh, uh, end my turn. Kuroki. Um, uh, I'm double checking something real quick. All right. I am. I'm going to yell at Stroyer to get down, first of all. Okay. And then as a bonus act, wait, let me double check. Yes. As a bonus action, I'm going to misty step up to here and use a breath and use my breath attack on these. Nice. Three. Uh, so uh, he's gonna go ahead and go prone. You're gonna go ahead and and that's awesome. Go ahead and wait. Deck save. It is a dex 12. Uh, what's their modifier? Hang on a second. 
Uh, dex save plus five. Uh, one of them will pass. The other two fail. So they take half damage. Uh, and okay. so the ones that didn't fail will take 17. The one that did fail takes, what is that, 8 or 7? 8. I think it's 8. All right, so the one that passed takes 8. And the other two take 17. Nice. Uh... Okay. Uh, they all just immediately uh, begin to be uh, electrocuted as this beam of lightning comes over. Schroeder ducking underneath it. Um, they look severely weakened. In fact, this one down here uh, by uh, Floki, he was just at the, the tail end of your, um, uh, your blast, but it was like just enough to make his armor begin to malfunction. You see steam begin to uh, erupt from his shoulder, and he kind of like... Uh, limps almost like a shopping cart with a missing wheel that's uh, kind of what he looks like um that is Rhonda's turn Rhonda's gonna go ahead and make her two attacks at this guy uh one of those will hit uh she stabs at this guy with his rapier and she's able to finish one off uh that is her turn Stroider uh after taking the command to get down he's actually going to use his action to disengage use the other half of his movement to get on the ship and he's going to use his bonus action to kind of ready uh, Tulu's swivel gun um, to fire. Um, that is his turn. Uh, Vagrant. Um, I have questions. Uh, yeah. My first question is, um, uh, would it, it would take a while, right, uh, to disembark these ships, like to actually get them away from the dock and to uh, enough crew to do it? Uh, if you, you wanted to, the minimum crew of uh, the Twilight's Revenge is three, I believe. The minimum crew of the Red Heron is two, it might, uh, if I remember correctly. I don't quite remember. They do have minimum crew, um, but it would take some time, yes. How many turns would it take to unmoor ourselves? Uh, to, to get rid of the Twilight's Revenge, if you're all committed to it, I would say it'd take two turns. Uh, the Red Herring needs at least two uh, players or NPCs, and it would take one turn. This is much faster. Okay. All right. Um, uh, uh, none of these NPCs know, know me this well. Page, Zusa. So. Okay. All right, in that case, I'm going to attack uh, this guy. I'm going to drop the pistol and then pull one out and fire. All right. And I'm going to, well, actually, that's something. Uh, 23 to hit. Uh, that definitely hits. And I'm going to pump uh, four of my sailor dice. Nice. Into it. Uh, I think that's a D6. Or does it go up? Uh I believe it is a D6 at your level. It might be a D8, but I think it's a D6 at your level. I'm eighth, so it's D6, yeah. So I'll do four D6. Plus your regular damage. So nine plus 12 is 21 damage. 21 damage. Uh, you lunge this uh, blade through and you skewer this guy. All right, and then I attack this person with my blade. All right. Um, take my shirt jacket off. I'm getting oops. toasty. 11 Heart rate's eight. going up. Uh, 11 will miss, sadly. You've missed this guy twice now. He's beginning to get cocky as he kind of grins uh, at you up across the... Uh, where is my thing at? I imagine, like, I fired. I jumped and fired and missed mm -hmm. and then, like, landed and then started, like, parrying back and forth with this guy. And, uh, and then pulled my pistol out and fired and hit and killed this guy again. Uh, but, uh, but then I'm like actually sword fighting this guy. So like I was dodging this person. He actually hit me and then we'd been dueling and then I just pulled a pistol out and killed this guy from that Yeah. I'm losing, I'm losing the blade fight. 
At that point, Tulu uh, arrives at the scene, flying in on the opposite side of the dock. We're oh. Okay. Um. Is it my turn? Yep. All right. I s- what do I see going on here? I guess just uh, the battle. You see, yeah, you see a battle. You see a bunch of these guys wearing this strange armor with these glowing gloves, just like punching uh, people. You see Fagrin fire a blast, and this guy kind of just, ex- his suit kind of explodes in this fiery abyss as he falls over. Okay. What's my flying speed? I never did on that. Uh, I believe it's 40 feet. 40? Yeah. All right. I'll move my 40. And come down to a landing. And then with that, um, how many, how many, how many creatures do I see? That do I see all of these that are still alive? I guess. Uh, yeah. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them still alive. All right. Um, since I moved that forty and landed, do I still have an action? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to cast conjure animals. Conjure animals, okay. All right, and the way you and I worked it out, Mm -hmm. I've got a list of six here where I'm going to do the um, eight of quarter CR or lower. Okay. I've got a list of six different ones, and you said you were going to roll to figure out which one it was, or I roll one of the two? Uh, Yeah, you can go ahead and roll. All right. Come on, Velociraptor. (laughs) Hey, I got it. You got Velociraptor? Yeah. Oh Love my god. Girl. So what you watch happen next, uh, and uh, can you read wh- where did they arrive? Does it say where they arrive? Um, on, it just says they, they're summoned. Does it have like an area of effect? I've used this spell, so... Mm-hmm. And appear in unoccupied spaces that you can see within range, in the range of 60 feet. Okay, uh, and how many do you get? Eight. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, you have your eight. Uh, you can go ahead and place them anywhere you'd like within your 60-foot bubble. So 60 feet is all the way out to there. Uh, I say what this looks like is you cast a spell. Um, there are all these holes where these guys have burrowed through, and these just these raptors just like begin to bur- spill out of these holes in the in the floor of the dock. Gosh. Do they get do they get attack turn this time or not? Uh, probably not? The spell probably says, but that's okay. I'm gonna say it makes sense if they do because why else would they be here? Okay. Bear with me. Sorry, guys. This is the first time I've used this. And... Okay, I think this is a kick-ass spell, so we're going to see okay, it. Yeah. Wait, you well, summoned I... an army of velociraptors? Yeah, yep. they got pack yeah, attack. Go, go ahead and put my sword down. This is going to take a minute, because they got a ton of attacks. and um... A pack attack means they attack at advantage, so uh, you're going to roll eight attacks at advantage. Yeah. Um, okay. you, you can use the roll 20 roller if that makes it easier, too. This is the day I was dreaded. <laughs> what, being the most powerful druid in the Mythic Isles? I thought that's what no, you were. No, um, having to... I can't even spell... I'm trying to pull up their sheet. I, I, w- I mean... Uh, I mean... Shoot. There we go, I got it. Alright. They got two attacks, also. Okay. Bite and claw. All right. You an advantage on attack rolls against creature. Yeah, so. Yeah. All right. So what's the best way to roll this? Just. Uh, so it's 16 attacks at advantage. Okay. But they got a plus five. 15. Mm-hmm. 15. So 20. One of them. Okay. The first one I hit once. Okay. I think, uh, here, let's go ahead and let's use the roller, because this, otherwise we'll be here all day. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, we want, uh, 16 attacks at advantage, so let's just double that. 28 attacks. Uh, 28 plus 5. 
plus five, you said? You said six, you said double that, yeah, so sorry. 20. Yeah, 30, 30, 30. 32 attacks with a plus five on the roll. How do I do that? I got it. Okay. Got it right here. Uh, oh, it doesn't work the way I thought it would. Just kidding. Because <laughs> uh, I added them all up together. So we got to do 1d20 plus 5 and then click it for each steps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. All right. Now we got to wait for roll 20 to think about that for a minute. All right. So we got, I'm just going to start checking them off here. That's 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty hits, and I believe there was a crit in there too. Hey, uh, divide, one crit. Divide, divide that number by two. Because it's okay. showing on this sheet, it's showing a Velociraptor as uh, right. half CR. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 10 of them hit. I was going to say 10 of them hit. Uh, and yeah, go ahead. And what, was it, what did they get for damage? Uh, 1d8 plus 3 on the bites and 1d6 plus 3 on the claws. So half bites, half claws. Okay. Uh, one D eight plus one, three. two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. All right. Scroll, 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 scroll. Did I use D fours or did I? Okay, I did. Okay. Uh, eleven, six, ten, seven. Uh, they officially take out this one, and this one that was sleeping. They just maul it to death. Uh, that is their turn, which I'm going to go ahead and, and add um, as a addition to your turn. And thank you for doing that, Jake. I knew that I was going to have trouble with this once I did this. No, it's this. okay. Uh, new spells can be that way often. And, and um, for the record, I found the Velociraptor, this one. There is a quarter CHR. So okay. we do have eight of them. For how, yeah. But their but they're, uh, damage is... I'll work it out next time. Okay. Not a big deal. Um, there it goes. And make this 12. All right. That was Tulu. Uh, where's my scroller? There it is. Uh, back down to he. Uh, he is on the ship. Uh, the scene it being crushed by another ship as the ships kind of begin to swarm around. Uh, they say it was a bush. Uh, and then you see over uh, on the, in the further out in the harbor, ships just landing with a crash <laughs> they have these large sails um that look like um like umbrella shapes um and they're there are these massive furnaces on them just blasting them with hot air um these ships can basically like leapfrog um using uh hot air balloon mechanics uh on their ships um they have these massive uh large metal rams with large spikes on them so these ships are like basically siege weapons um throughout the the port that's what she can see does she do anything to act no just i i think sort of trying to evade and, and get away from danger okay uh i think she's able to do so i mean she's pretty small so uh if she's able to if she might have to leave the ship's vicinity if she gets in this scrum of things but as of right now she's okay um that is now these guys' turns uh noticing these velociraptors pouring out of the holes and Fager taking one of them out, they begin to look around, and this this one next to Kleroki calls out, uh, holding his shoulder from which has been singed by lightning. He calls out to his buddy, It's not worth it! Let's get out of here! Boss will be angry, but 
I'm not risking my life for his goods. Uh, he begins to try to run away. Uh, he's taking the dash action, so uh, Kuroki, you get an attack of opportunity as he begins to run away from you. Uh, so uh, would okay. uh, Rhonda. Rhonda's also going to roll. Uh, Rhonda uh, 17 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. Five damage. Sorry, how much? Five. Five. Uh, it takes five damage. You, you slash at his uh, the back of his shin as he's riding. Uh, begins to limp a little bit, but continues. Uh, he's going to go ahead and move his 60 feet. Uh, and this one is going to go ahead and try the same thing. Um, let's say uh, that would be Loki and Kuroki. You guys can do attack of opportunities as he's going to run right past you as well. I don't suppose an 11 hits. Does not, sadly. Very sadly. Does an 18 hit? Yes, it does. Uh, that would be three damage. Three damage. Uh, you kind of nick him as well as he runs past. Uh, then it is uh, after that, this guy is going to go ahead and try to punch a Velociraptor. Uh, that's a nat 20 to punch a Velociraptor. <laughs> uh, that's uh, 16 fire damage, which I believe is enough to down one. Uh, he kills a Velociraptor with his fiery fist uh, and says, I got this, guys, don't worry. Uh, this one next to him, noticing the Velociraptors, noticing the spellcaster next to him, picks his poison. I'm going to have him roll with some saving throw to the side. Uh, he's going to go ahead and try to punch a Velociraptor as well. Uh, that's going to hit with a 17 to hit uh, for 10 fire damage. Bad. Uh, kills with another one. Uh, this one's going to attack Fagrin. Uh, that's a 17 to hit. Uh, it hits. Okay. Uh, for five fire damage. Uh, that is their turn. It is now Susan and Minky, or Susa and Paige, who are taking command of the vessel as Fagrin has commanded. Uh, uh, Paige begins to aim and, uh, and Susa loads a cannon to be fired. Uh, that is their actions for this turn. Uh, that leads us back to two, or sorry, Floki. All right. I have prepared long for this moment, and yet insufficiently. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, I would like to run at these fleeing guys. Okay. And then cast Misty Step. All right. And that would put me on the other side of this loser. This go as you as you appear right in front of them. And I like to say, if you want something, you should pay for it. And uh, and then I would like to cast Green Flame Blade. Yes. Roll the hit. All right. Let's see. Boy, howdy. I'm great at this melee combat thing. I am. That's a 24 to hit. That definitely hits. He takes six piercing damage and... Very curious. And four fire damage. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you plunge this uh, flaming blade into him. It lights this uh, chemical on his chest, and it just explodes. Uh, green flame becomes this bright red flame as a flash happens, um, and he drops. Uh, the guy behind him looks terrified. I would urge you to surrender. Uh, that is Kuroki's turn. Clue is he's going to come running down here at these guys and he's going to take out his morning star. Nice. And uh, cast Thunderous Smite. All right. So let's see here. 
That's a nat 20 for the first one. Oh my goodness. I'm going to smite. <laughs> yep. So that All right. would be... Let's see. That's that and that. And then you double the smite damage too. Oh, I do? Yep. Oh, dang. Paladins are insane. Okay, so that. <laughs> I gotta do some math real quick. Yep, we're um, good. <laughs> this is the part of the game that it's gonna happen. 28 damage. 28 damage. You bring this Morningstar down on this guy. It just smashes this contraption you hear a bone snap as this metal uh piece of his armor pierces himself through uh you watch this like this pipe just juts out of his chest from the opposite side as he drops uh and i'm gonna turn to the other one and say surrender now and you might live <laughs> roll an intimidation check at advantage meanwhile it is rhonda's turn rhonda is going to run up to this one. Oh, that's a 17. Uh, 17. He is probably going to be convinced by that. Uh, Rhonda misses this guy, sadly. Uh, that is her turn. Stroider's turn. Stroider's going to unleash the railgun at this guy. Uh, let's see. That is going to hit, just barely. Uh, but with 24 damage... He's going to go down as well. Uh, Stroider covering for Rhonda there. Uh, that brings us back to Fagrin. Um, all right. Um, I will. Uh, I'm just going to attack this guy twice with my. Uh, my go for it. Uh, 25 and 24 to hit. Both hit. Um, what is, I guess it would tell me if I got a nat 20. Yeah, I think it highlights a green when you get a nat 20. Oh, it says I got a... Oh yeah, 18 and then 17. Okay. So, uh, and that's 19 damage. 19 damage. Uh, you uh, plunge your rapier into him a couple times. He uh, kind of... Uh, clutches his hands against the blade um, trying to slow it um, but he's struggling to do so um, and actually just heating up the blade and hurting himself in the process uh, that is Tulu's turn <laughs> okay. Unless, do you have anything else you want to do? okay let me make sure alright Tulu alright Tulu's going to do the boss or raptors first alright one two three you're moving here wait that's, I don't know the distance yeah, okay. Yeah. Alright. Three are going here, and these three are going here. Alright. And I can roll these. Alright. Um, 13 and 22. Uh, missing a hit. Okay. And two misses. Uh, 14 and 11. Uh, both miss. 22 and 17. Uh, both hit. 13. Miss. And miss. Was that four or five? Five. I wasn't counting. I thought you were counting. <laughs> I, was, I was, but I'll... Uh, in this last one. Uh, 17 and 17. Uh, Just... That hits. Okay. So I hit four times... Okay. One, two, on the first one. Just roll D6s for the sake of it. Okay. Or, or D8s, whichever one was the high. D8s, yeah. D no. Yeah, because it's, it's it, the math is not that different on D8. Well, but the quarter the quarter CR is a little bit lower than what I told you the first oh, time. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, so D4. Or, yeah, D4 plus two. Okay. Seven. Four. Six and four. He goes down as these ra these raptors maul into the sky. You hear the hissing claws and then the hissing pipes as this guy's just ripped apart. And since that's a concentration spell, 
I can't cast another. Can I cast another spell? You can cast wow. another spell as long as it's not concentration spell. As long as it's not concentration, okay. Yep. Alright, then I'll cast, uh... I'm not going to use it. Um, I'll just, uh, cast Frostbite. Alright, con save? Yes, 14. Uh, he got a 4. Plus his modifier, but probably not much. Alright, 2d6. Uh, 6 points, and... Was it disadvantage? Oh, yeah. Uh, so he's, uh, how many points? Sorry. Uh, two d six, so uh, six points of damage. All right. And disadvantage on the next weapon attack roll. He is barely holding on. Uh, that is your turn. Uh, he continues to watch as these ships begin to be outmaneuvered by ships that, that can leap across the waters maneuvering in ways that conventional ships have no ability to, such as leaping up and actually backwards behind a ship to broadside them from behind. Uh, Key is basically just witnessing a massacre on the on the waters. Uh, now it is back to these guys, I believe. If my uh, mouse would work. There we go. Uh, he's the last one remaining. Uh, and realizing that he is surrounded, he does what most people would think is the unthinkable, but he takes his flaming fist gloves, looks at them both, and just shouts, as he literally punches himself in the head with his glowing uh, gloves and gives up on life, committing suicide. Uh, as that happens, uh, he can see a finale of uh, cannon fire as the city ships are being sunken by these vessels. Wow. Right. Uh, I would use my action to dismiss her and my following action to re-smiss her okay. in my physical presence. All right. Uh, you do so. Let me... She's somewhere on the screen. Oh, my goodness. Roll Tony, stop doing that. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so what happens now uh, as you guys are able to ward off all of these attackers? Fagrin comes over to Tulu and just immediately is like, Tulu, I can't believe you could do that. These creatures. <laughs> well, I learned, I learned a few tricks here and there, boss. You know, I got, I got, I tell you, I, you know, I, I'm learning some things. Even from Floki, I'm learning some things, but I'll, I'll tell you about them later. Um, so what happened to these guys? Where'd they come from? Are these the same guys? Because, you know, those ships out there that well, I was out there and I was flying around and, you know, the city guards, they had a bunch of ships and these uh, these other guys that are trying to attack them, they weren't there yet, but there's only like four of those ships. So I figured it's going to be a no battle and the city guards are going to, the city ships are going to win. So, but That's they really had, good. yeah, but they had dwarf ru dwarven runes on, and I couldn't read them. But, uh, do these, did these guys look like dwarves? Uh, yeah. Yeah, most of them do. Some of them look, uh, like half dwarf, half human, uh, but most of them look like dwarves, yeah. Well, since these guys are dwarves, they're probably the same guys that are on those ships, to tell you the truth. I'll, I'll run over and, and I'll, I'll say, the, the situation at the, at the other gate is, is completely different, completely the opposite. They're, they're just, the, the city ships are gone, they're destroyed. What, the, I, I, I don't, I need more time and words. But the attacking ships, they can jump and they have rams. Never seen anything like it. That's where they were. They outnumbering the city people uh, by a lot. It was it was just it was a massacre that was over. Hmm. Well, we might not be too safe here then. I don't know. Uh, um, meanwhile, as you guys kind of look around uh, at all these uh, bodies, you also happen to notice that nobody else is seems to be on the docks. Like as you look out to the docks, uh, windows are boarded up or like uh, closed up, and like no one is to be seen. The streets look deserted. So, uh, these um, uh, the place that um, Key went is like toward Mudport to the north. Yes. Okay, and then the place Tulu went is toward the Ochre Towers to the west? Correct. Okay. So, the main effort 
must obviously be at Mudport. What was it about Mudport? There was something about it. It was... I have notes somewhere. It's a... It might be where the pirates are... Nope, it's just it's just on the other side of the lagoon, and it's some settlement. There was some reason. Uh, someone at one point mentioned that we could, if we were going to take over a city, it ought to be Mudport. But there was something else about Mudport that's really important. Hey, Dungeon Master, what do we recall about Mudport? You guys can give me history checks. One free check. I, I love history. And Floki is a very learned fellow. What does a 17 get me? 10. 18. 10? 18? 14. 14. So, Fagrin, you remember talking to these young sailors at the bar. And in fact, one of them that you recruited, uh, or I believe it was Rudy. Uh, that decided that he would join you guys uh, last night. Um, that he was a sailor uh, of sorts uh, that manned a dinghy that would travel between here and Mudport. Uh, Mudport is uh, known for the reef that it sits on, is, is, is good for fishing, uh, far away from the uh, waste of the city, um, and able to produce good uh, fishing that is like uh, uh, productive because otherwise like the city can't produce uh, fish because they are the waters yucky and fish don't live around here um, so it's a fishing town on the opposite side of the lagoon that basically fishes and ships it over to here um, they also are a separate port so they also are ways to um, supply you know all types of goods um, just in a separate location um, similar to, you know, not keeping all of your eggs in one basket, the city tends to leverage that port as extra, you know, storage space. Uh, and yeah, uh, Floki, I think you're kind cool. of able to come to the same conclusion. Um, Tulu looks around, he says, uh, hey, you know, y'all were fighting for a while before I got here. Um, anybody hurt? Anybody need 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 my magic touch? Everybody good? Everybody feel ready to take on and have another fight? Uh, Tulu, uh, I could use some help, but more than anything, uh, we need to warn the fleet. If we're going to help the city, maybe it's time that we pick a side. And we'll... I suppose these and a point to the dead bodies sort of helped in that. Um, we, uh, yeah. if we could warn we can't... Oh, sorry. Did you need, well, what I was asking for, Captain, do you need any healing? Or did you get hurt? I, uh, I got, uh, stabbed uh, by one of these goons. Uh, stabbed me in the shoulder. Okay. Well, I hear you. Oh, thank okay. you. Okay. But if you could fly again, uh, and we could warn the fleet to the west either not moor here and not come back, or at least to let them know what's happening at what, Mudport. What's Tulu's fly speed? Um, 60, didn't you say, Jake? Uh, yeah. I don't know. You have to look at the stats of uh, Flying Broom. I think it's 40, though. Oh. Oh, yeah. Because it's basically just Flying Broom that's reskin. If, it, if it's just a flying broom, then I can just send Key off and, and, and warn the fleet that way. That'd be great. I'll, I will I will do that declarative statement. I'd like to send Key off to the Western Gate to, to find the fleet and the kangaroo man. Okay, uh, you send her out. She begins to fly there. What is her fly speed? Her fly speed is 40 feet. And okay. while she's doing that, I'd uh, like to loot some bodies and get some ships ready for some sailing. Okay, uh, you go ahead and you guys will have to roleplay for a minute because I have some bookkeeping on my end I have to do now. If, if it's not important, I might propose that that could be handled after the session. Okay, um, it, it, I think it's very much important. I, was, I have to figure out at what point in the battle that she arrives. Uh, that's why gotcha, I have to do gotcha. it. Um, 
It has a flying speed of 50 feet. 50 carry feet. Up, yep. Carry up 400 pounds. Okay, then. Okay. We Mine might have to um, I, I agree, uh, Floki. We, we need to gather these bodies. Take what evidence we can. We can dispose of the bodies in a way that is befitting them later. Um, okay. Maybe, Kloroki, maybe you could help with that, but uh, the equipment, anything that would tell us about who they are, we'll keep. And anything that is of value. And we need to try to get our crew out of the city as fast as we can. And Fagrin, when Tulu came up and touched you and rubbed you on the shoulder, just, or I'm sorry, rubbed you on the knee a little bit, he reached up and, you know, he's kind of short, so he rubbed you and uh, healed you for eight points of damage. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. He arrives um, at the fleet, warning them. Uh, it takes him a couple moments to convince the guards to listen to this pixie. Uh, well, my, my plan for convincing was absolutely to find whoever was in charge. And just like whisper ominously the news, kind of, kind of like some sort of vision equivalent, but for audio, like words on the wind. Not to not to go all I'm a pixie and you need to listen to what I have to right. say. Um, what's your spell save DC? My spell save DC is fourteen. All right, it works as they fail, um, and it and it continues. Um, yeah, you're able to convince them to turn around um, and begin to send ships the opposite direction. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Fagrin says to find the crew. Uh, Rhonda holding her shoulder says, "I'm sorry, Captain. I I feel like I failed you. What should we have just given them the barrels? Absolutely not." That was the bravery that I've come to expect from you, Rhonda. You get well now. We need to hold this position. Right. Hey. Captain, how did they know we had the barrels? Aye. Good question. That she, might uh, be because everyone knows. Oh, there was that. This is, this is the worst kept secret ever. It. She nods and points to Floki, and she says, Yeah, they kept saying that the, the city says we had them, and they were entitled to them. I assume these are Maradu's marauders, and uh, I also assume that it may be wise to perhaps find some location of land and uh, bury these barrels somewhere, and then perhaps make a map leading to their location. But not like a clear map, one with clues in the form of riddles. I think between the two of us, we can do that, she replies. Yeah, that might be a tomorrow problem, though. For right now, we've kind of got, you know, this, uh, uh, ugh. Uh, she points to Stroider, and she says, good job out there. He kind of nods and jumps off the ship, um, with a grunt. And she says, Captain, do you want us to go get the crew? Or do you all want to do... I don't know. What are, what are our orders? Stay here. Get well. Stay with Zeus and Paige. We'll get the crew and come back and reorganize. Can I walk up to Stroider and put my arm kind of around him and say, You like that gun, didn't you? That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, just curious, how injured is uh, Rhonda looking right now? Oh, she looks fine. All right. She's a pretty tanky character. All right. Just you can make... tip her off if you want to, like, top her off if you wanted to, but she's... No, I'm, I think it's, I'm 100% out of spell slots right now. Okay. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna keep that uh, lay on hand for, you know, in case of emergency, but... All right. Now, are you hurt? I... Me? Uh, I'm fine. Okay. I already took care of myself, so... Were there any like distinguishing markings on other than the dwarven runes that we would know about any, from the ships? So on you that? guys, you guys are looting the bodies, right? Go ahead and give me investigation checks. Everybody who wants to loot a body, go ahead and give me an investigation. Check. Also on the Wait. ships, we definitely need information. 
That's a nine. Thirteen. Nineteen. Natural twenty. Okay. All right, I see how it is. <laughs> uh, mostly, you're able to find standard gear. Every man has about twelve silver on them. Um, you also notice um, they have um, uh, these are arcane gloves. Uh, there are several dozen sets of these gloves now. If you guys want to loot all the gloves, um, they are uh, magma gloves. Um, when equipped, they give you a burrowing speed of ten feet, um, and they do two d6 fire damage as an attack. Um, with as a strength based attack, um, they all are wearing these. Um, they each have um, different brandings on them. Uh, some of them appear to be uh, symbols that uh, Floki is very familiar with of the Metal Beards, um, mm. the King of Pirates of Luterna. Uh, some of them are bearing a very different symbol, uh, a symbol that actually was shown to you guys by Argusto. Um, the symbol of the inverted skull with the uh, quiver of arrows and a key dashed through it. Um, uh, they all have these uh, uh, different, uh, I don't want to call them like handkerchiefs, but like uh, pieces of fabric that um, are bright purple, um, part of the Marauder, Marauder's uh, shtick. Uh, that they each kind of bear these marks. Um, between all of them, uh, you don't really find anything great uh except excuse me except for Kluroki, you do find a note and the note is written in giant i don't speak giant does anyone here speak giant i speak giant i give the note to floki all right all floki. right i cast uh, comprehend languages all right you do so um and as you read it um it is uh, written in what looks to be a blood of sorts a, a very thick mucusy blood um that has dried yeah. to the page um and you recognize uh the the giant symbols um it says find them take it it's ours blando and that's all it says look at loki and i say loki remember i handed you that halfling note and you said you could read it but I can't you... read everything. It's I can only read important things. But that note was important, and you lied to me. You sold that me. Was... I told you I couldn't speak halfling. You said you couldn't read that note. I said I couldn't read halfling. I just wagged my finger at him. I got you. I know what you. I I know your game. We don't have time to argue. We have to find our crew members now. We might as well get started. Unless anyone has any suggestions. Well... No. Let's go back. All right. All right. Uh, you guys uh, head out into the, the city. Um, the streets are deserted. Most of the businesses have been closed up and locked up. Eventually, you find um, at the Busy Beaver, you do find several of your uh, crew members. Uh, you find uh, Clyde, Linzu, Swipes, and Quintrell enjoying drinks at the, the Busy Beaver. Linzu, Swipes, and what? Uh, uh, Linzu, Clyde, Quintrell, Swipes. Quintrell. Okay, I have a question uh, for uh, Key. Uh, Key is with uh, the, uh, the city ships to the west. Is there any indication that they're in danger? Or are they making the road back? Does it uh, look like ships are, are headed this way? These are good. Uh, these are all good questions, Mr. Dungeon Master. Uh, as you try to... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So you're asking from a report from Key? Uh, yeah, what have I been seeing? Uh, Probably going to keep doing that. Is she still there? That's a, I, I lost track of things that have been happening. Is yeah, I, I think... I haven't given any other directions, so she'll probably stay with the fleet okay. and keep an eye on that. Uh, then, yeah, she clarifies that they've already vanquished the, the threat at the West Gate. Um, it was simply a tactic to separate the fleet and make it not so powerful. Um, and they are beginning to head back towards the ambush site in the center of the lagoon. Um, uh, but from this point, um, they have, uh, it looks like pretty evenly matched. Um, the city has more numbers. Um, but the ships, these attacking ships, are incredibly maneuverable. Um, 
and incredibly powerful siege weapons that are putting up a bigger fight, um, punch it above their weight, so to speak. All right, I will relay all of this information. There's a large battle heading at, like right now that's in the center of the lagoon. Oh, there is a battle going on. Yes, yes. and it, it looks it looks pretty even at the moment uh, with the city having the numbers and these attackers having uh, better ships. I turn to uh, Floki then, and I say, Floki, when you came here, you looked at this place and you said that you wanted to make it better. Mm. Do you still stand by that? Yeah, yeah, a little, little frazzled, little lot of uh, inputs and not knowing a whole lot going on. But yeah, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd certainly like to something, 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 something. How much would you be willing to risk on that? That's a good question. Well, the the fighting is uh, seems to already be in the cards there, and all the risks associated with it. So I, it's time we pick a side. Clyde, Linzu, Swipes, Quintrell. Battle is afoot. Ships are headed this way. Quintrell. Yes, Captain. Raise the flag. Aye, Captain. See you soon. Alright, do you continue to head out for your other crew members? You do you set sail? How many more are we missing? Uh, quite a few. <laughs> uh, and if you remember, uh, Rhonda actually said they took some of them. Mm. Who took some of them? I don't remember. These attackers. Gosh. Yes, the, these attackers took uh, Kellum, Talfin, and Liz. How much of the ship can ships can we operate right now? Uh, with the four of you and these, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven NPCs, both of them. But how many, how many cannons can we operate on the Twilight's Revenge? We can't even operate all of them as it is. We could operate maybe three if we find the rest of our crew. We have four. Uh, and then we can operate, uh, uh, two lose, small cannon, and then maybe your cannon. Maybe two cannons. We, we could, if we, we could set the we could we could send the red herring out now, fully fully manned, and keep looking for a crew for the Twilight's Revenge. It'd be risky, but it's a it's a the red herring's a skirmishing vessel with the sniping gun. The that's an option. It could, it could potentially do some damage while staying out of the way. I uh, have a little bit of a plan, Floki. All I don't right. know that it's a good one. These ships, ours are no match. I want to try to force uh, an encounter with Blando. I think I may have a card to play. But are we going to run out of time, actually? That's another thing. We've got, like, this town, like, running around a town. We're going to run out of time before we can get back to the ship. That's the only thing. If so... I don't think we... Oh, go ahead. I feel obligated to point out, I don't think we know where Blando is, unless this is a part of your... A component part in your plan. Um... I think I might be able to get his attention. Uh, and that's my hope. All right. It's a very vague plan. But then they're coming this way, so we're either going to win or lose, right? Am I misunderstanding that? There's a battle in the lagoon. If I go back to the geography of the... Uh, they have the gates, right? Uh, mm -hmm. No, it's in the lagoon. I'm sorry. It's they're, in they're the past, lagoon. They're past the gates. And uh, the city is losing, but they're close uh, to it's, it's, it's Right now, it's pretty dang equal. Okay. Especially with the, the tip-off from Keith. Yeah. Uh, so my proposal, uh, I basically have this flag uh, 
uh, that uh, mechanically in the game suggests that it would uh, force some sort of reaction if, uh, if we fly it. And my goal would be to kind of cut off the head of the snake, rather, instead of trying to actually tactically win. Is this is this a magical compulsion, or are you attempting to to request a parlay in the middle of a battle? Uh, I want to try to get his attention, and then either parlay or kill him face to face. Ready, Brandon? If you want me to get his attention, I'll send a tidal wave at him. Or we can just use really powerful magic and like take out the whole fleet right now. <laughs> can you summon a tidal wave? Yep, up to. 30 feet long, 10 feet wide, and 10 feet tall. Uh, that's like one boat. Yeah. Okay. It's still a boat. It's still a tidal wave. The velociraptors can't swim as far as I know. <laughs> no, but I Dark can cannon. summon uh, <laughs> creatures that swim. Or you could just go up to the ships and summon velociraptors on their uh, deck. I mean, that's pretty... That, that'd be All a right. first... All right, real quick, guys. What's the plan here? Are yeah. we going to continue to find crew, or are we going to set sail with what well, we have? I, there are two. Real quick here. Uh, does it look realistic? We're here. We're in a town. We're like, oh my god, where is everybody? Do for example, do Clyde? It's a Lindsay, very, it's because, a very much push your luck kind of situation because ah, you okay. are limited on time. So the more You're, people you have, the more efficient you will be. But the later the battle, you will arrive. Here's um, what, here's what I want to do then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is what I propose. Um, I, I'm going to try to do this crazy, stupid thing with the with the flag. So uh, I propose we have a crew member um, try to find everybody and get who they can to the Red Herring. Uh, the rest of us get to the Twilight's Revenge now and uh, uh, unmoor and head out to the head out to the lagoon and try to find whoever's leading this fleet, get their attention to force a confrontation. Um, and also, that just sounds like fun. I uh, might propose as a detail in this plan that we, we want to do this, so we move the barrels from the Red Herring to the Twilight's Revenge for reasons of A because the red herring would be vulnerable during this time, and we probably don't want to lose the barrels. And uh, reason two, in case of emergency, break barrels. They do weird, powerful, magical things that I don't understand. Yeah. Which could be useful or kill us all, but there's sometimes a time when that's a useful math. Yeah, let's do it. Let's move the barrels. Um, I really tempted to say that Floki should stay so that he can be with the uh, red herring but also I don't want to not have Floki so I don't know what I don't know what to do about that but I can't can send key which is a non-trivially useful thing you mean with along us? with you guys while, while I keep Floki's person back at the ship Floki is for whatever it's worth Presently out of spells, so okay. So in a and if he hangs back, he he might also be able to regain them. All right. Although that's probably not useful. So give me something really damn clever that the red herring is going to do once it gets to us. Uh, shoot people. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Can't get much cleverer than that. All right. Let's do it. All right. So, who all is going aboard the Red Herring? Twilight's Revenge. Oh, Twilight's Revenge. I'm sorry, I was half listening and half preparing for this. Because you guys definitely are engaging where I didn't think we would. Um, okay. I don't know why I didn't prepare for this. This, this is a party of great courage. Alright, the Twilight's Revenge is stocked with the barrels. And the following NPCs. Uh, the Twilight's Revenge is has, uh, by subtraction, everyone except Floki and one NPC of your whoever, Stroider, whoever it is. 
Uh, I'll whoever take you... Stroider. You guys can take Rhonda. And then uh, every single NPC that you guys gather in town, right? You're, gather, you're trying to get everybody you can. And whoever you find in enough time, you get to the Red Herring. Every single other NPC is going to Twilight Revenge. Yep. And even with that, we can only fire like. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna hunt down every NPC before we leave. No, no, no. That's me. That's my yeah. problem. That's he's the shore party. Okay, so he's staying behind to we're gather. We're splitting the party. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to make sure Sorry. I get this straight. It's okay. I just want to make sure I get this right. Uh, so Floki is the one staying behind with Schroeder. Everyone else is on the Twilight's Revenge. That's where I was. Okay, yeah. including Key. Yeah. Okay. And, and Floki is is like coordinating the evacuation to the Red Herring, and then if he's successful, then they can get the Red Herring in to support us. Okay. I'm having I'm having, a, I'm having some slightly better ideas than shoot them. Slightly yes. better. I'll hang on to those though. Nice. For dramatic effect. Yeah. At the moment, uh, we're gonna run out of time tonight, which is very sad. But this is gonna be. I think what we need to do is I need like. A couple of rolls here, and then we're gonna pause, and we're gonna come back and pick this up later, so I can actually I think have that's a okay. battle, map, battle map prepared because this is I I I didn't think we were gonna get engaged in city business, and now we are, and I'm all for it. Where else um, were we gonna go? The, the what part of conquest wasn't clear. The lagoon uh, is right there. I mean, uh, that's very yeah. true. Our uh, well, rivals also, are killing each other. We can eliminate one and befriend the other. It is the perfect of all political situations. All right. And I'll also give you guys uh, some time to review your ship statistics, uh, which you were in the Jaunty Tide ship comparison uh, dock um, from forever ago. Um, however, the, the roles I need at the moment are uh, an investigation check at advantage for Floki to gather crew members. I don't suppose... No, that's totally correct. That'd be investigation. All right, let's find out. Oh, oh look at that. Time. That's a 19. That works, too. 19, uh, you find the following NPCs. Uh, Doros, Arton, and Aiden. Who were actually some in some alleyway, hiding once the chaos broke out. Um, they didn't know if what was going on, but once the, the uh, people in the city uh, cleared out, they hid and you were able to find them uh go ahead and give me one more roll Invest on myself yes investigation with advantage yes all right let's see what we got here all right that's the same role okay you're also able to find minky um and with your knowledge you are missing the three npcs that Rhonda said were stolen and a certain dwarf durfol who is a bosun that was gained from Kleroki's crew. Uh, he is the last remaining NPC you are missing. Do you continue to look for him? That will that will depend on what is if, if it's if we're getting into time constraints, that will depend on what I see through Key's eyes. Okay. If if it seems like things are if it seems like we're getting into the action, then I'm I'm gonna then I'd peel back and, and say we, we're rocking it rolling. Say at that point you definitely are, so you're gonna peel back and leave him. Uh, in the meantime, I would like, let's see, Tulu, give me a perception check, uh, Kluroki, give me an athletics check, uh, Fagrin, give me any wisdom check you'd like with a, um, probably actually sleight of hand, I believe, uh, not, okay, do you have proficiency in sleight of hand? Oh, do I? Okay, that's what I assume. Um, and what's your wisdom modifier? Uh, my wisdom modifier is plus two. I'm sorry. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, plus two. Okay. Go ahead and roll side of hand with a plus two on top of it um, for your Ooh, overall can I use command. My inspiration? <laughs> yes, you can raise your inspiration okay. and you can dump your sailor dice if you want to. Um, and then I'm going to have uh, the other NPCs roll as well. That's their performance of the ship's crew. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oof. All right, that's better. Okay. Uh, Tulu, what'd you get for per per perception? Perception, 15. 15. All right. Kuroki. Nine. Okay. 
Fagrin. Uh, 22. Okay. Um, you guys are able to work together. Um, clearly you start to uh, slack off on the ropes. Um, your hands still kind of tingling from the magic surges of you poured out just moments ago. Um, but thankfully, uh, uh, Susa and Swipes and Quinchel are all there to uh, pull on the ropes alongside you, able to uh, get the sails where they need to be. Uh, Tulu doing a fantastic job. Let's look out, handing out small commands here and there to make sure that people are in ship shape. And Fagrin has never felt more alive as you are able to command uh, your crew and get them organized, um, get them, um, the, get the morale uh, at peak performance as you have uh, successfully undocked your ship out of the harbor and into the lagoon. At that point, um, you are surrounded by large uh, waves. Um, waves that would usually be caused by a storm that are actually being caused by the displacement of water from a massive 80-ton ship just being dropped in the ocean and these are in the yeah in this lagoon and these massive uh, waves uh rock the ship back and tip it back forward um as you begin to see the battlefield in front of you um there are ships on a blaze on fire um you see a ship stacked on top of another ship um as there are these ropes coming down rappelling down off of it um these large attacking ships have these parasail like uh sails um pumped with this hot air are able to kind of leap up and maneuver in these extraordinary ways that are incredibly confusing um and that is where we're ending for tonight hopefully next time we get to i guess that's actually pretty exciting because next time we get to have a sea battle See so, that? this is a pretty cool time to end it honestly i'm like yeah and we get to like really sit down and and, and bite into the the Glorious battle of negotiation. I'm excited. Ooh ha, man! Oh, you, guys yeah. really, you guys really like? Hey, let's pick a side. Let's pick it now. <laughs> I was, I, mean, I literally thought we're gonna be like, well, this sounds like city problems, not our problem. <laughs> and then, like, cause that's what that's what everything that happened in the first campaign was like. That it's like this sounds like not our problem. Let's just you've go got this a way. different crew this time. I yeah, now, now we're not, it's we're not a crew of courageous right. heroes out here doing the self-sacrificing. Yeah, I will say I would have liked a rest before we uh, went to battle, but I realized that wasn't really an option. Yeah, I'd, I'd like a lot of things, like more ships. But uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you know what they say: you go to you go to battle with the navy you have, not the bed rest you want. So if I die, I'm blaming Tulu. We have we have come to an accord that it is Tulu's fault. That's all good. It, you know, tonight was a lot different than what I expected. I thought we were going to go talk to Sephiro and or go check go out the apples. Hey man, we're dump. just going to check out apples for God's sake. Yeah, I was that's like, that's man, let's do the right. apples. I prep for apples, and we do not do apples, but that's okay. <laughs> oh.